understanding it has it has a major impact on things. So I'll let you, you know, I, I, that was that was a very general sort of overview, but I'll let you kind of explore and, and educate on those topics piece by piece. You have co-authored a paper on tanning beds. It was a systematic review of the research on tanning beds and uh, look, examining the nature of industry influence on the results of those studies. What did, what did that paper find and, and what kind of lessons are there, broader lessons and that maybe we'll talk also other examples of? Sure. So um, just to answer your previous question, and then I'll answer that one, because I realized that okay. yeah, the disinformation playbook, my, my apologies, um, I was lucky enough to partner with the uh, Union of Concerned Scientists, you know, some of their top research scientists to, to work on this paper. Uh, they've done an incredible work at showing how industry at every level uh, does impact science. And um, I can actually, um, let's see, uh, share screen. This is one of the slides from our paper, uh, uh, Read et al. And it talks about how science can protect the public from, you know, from, uh, from grifters, from what Adam Smith called the rentier seekers. That is people who are trying to extract value out of commons and to sort of privatize the profits and co collectivize or you know nationalize the uh, the harms right the effects the costs and so there are many different intervention points which uh, which industry can interfere and that includes um, faking the science uh, you know we have uh, looked a lot at um, industry funded fu funded science um, at this uh, UCSF uh, repository of previously secret industry documents. This is how I got into the business of uh, understanding conflicts of interest in science. And it's called uh, industrydocuments.ucsf.edu. I'll give a link for that as well. And we have 100 million pages of previously secret documents of the tobacco industry, the food and beverage uh, industry, uh, pharmaceutical industry, uh, including um, opioids and, you know, the sort of follow from the opioid epidemic, uh, the chemical industry and the um, fossil fuel industry. And what we see is that a lot of these companies, like, for example, ExxonMobil, will knowingly fund high profile scientists at, you know, top institutions in order to yeah, fake the science to get findings that are diametrically opposed to what they actually know from their own non-published private science mm -hmm. that these industries do. Because the, I, I have to be frank here, the science of these massive transnational industries is far better than public science because, well, they don't have to play by the same rules. They're not publishing it. They're keeping it private just for their own internal use. An example is ExxonMobil knowing about um, which sites were completely covered in ice and undrillable for oil, but they knew that if, if they bought them now at pennies on the dollar, 40 years later, due to climate change, they would be easily drillable. And so that's exactly what they did from their own incredibly <laughs> researched um, internal science. At the exact same time, they were funding all sorts of, um, yeah, public leaders, scientific leaders, uh, to do scientific uh, experiments and to write papers in the top journals to show that global warming was not a problem, did not exist, that humans could never uh, really, you know, impact Mother Nature. All of these old tropes were being used under the guise of science. And so that's just one example of, of, of many. But we see, you know, for example, the manufacture of uncertainty also, how industry undermines um, scientific protection of the public. And that's, for example, the indoor tanning industry um, and the American Sun Tanning Association spreading misinformation about the health benefits of artificial tanning um, in order to change norms that would disallow policies uh, you know, against sort of carte blanche uh, uh, marketing for for the industry. 
Um, and, and as you can see, you know, there, there are many other um, ways in which uh, industry interferes. But Science can also protect the public by speaking out, right? And saying, hey, you know, thalidomide, which is supposed to help morning sickness in women, is actually producing uh, birth defects, right? And our science shows that, and we need to, you know, have policy change so that we're not, you know, creating tragedy for, for these families. And so industry uh, can harass scientists who speak out, and they can retaliate uh, against the views, statements, and research of scientists uh, that's inconvenient for their own position and their uh, short and long-term profit. For example, uh, GlaxoSmithKline uh, threatened to sue a scientist for seeing him to walk back his findings that one of the company's diabetes drugs was increasing patients' risk of heart disease. Right? We're sort of in this, and I'll get back to this later, this whack-a-mole sort of chemical but also medical industry where you know you take this drug to, you know, uh, like a diabetes drug to deal with a social disease. Diabetes is not uh, um, something that you get in indigenous uh, societies or in societies that haven't been industrialized. This is something that comes with white bread, sugar, high carbohydrate diets, low nutrient diets. It comes with the green revolution and 